about sharing your story. Now, the thing about sharing your story for me is much, it's one of the hardest things and it always makes me feel extremely vulnerable, but it's where your power lies. So in that, on that note, I want to share with you a little bit about my story. So growing up, I had a, an extreme shyness. It kept me small, unheard, unseen. People would often ask, what's wrong with you? And, and it was just this shyness holding me back, back, back. And so I started doing acting classes as a vehicle of self-expression. And for the first time in my life, I got to be seen and heard and experienced, and it made me feel so powerful. So I wanted to do more of it. And I put all my energy into it and I started getting really good. You know, where you put your energy, you will develop. So I was winning the awards. I was getting the external validation. And then I got dependent on that external validation from everyone else. And then when I pursued acting and my career, I, I reached the ceiling. And apparently, I'd never known this, apparently I had an actor's worst nightmare, a, a speech impediment. <laughs> so I have a, a sibilant S, which just means your S is not very crisp and clear. And, and I just, I had to fix this. I had to fix it. So I did everything I could. I went to speech therapists, voice coaches, braces, jaw surgery. And the surgeon, he said to me, that this surgery has got a 99% success rate. Guess what? I turn out to be the 1% where this operation fails. So back at it. Voice coaches, speech therapists, braces, drilling into my jaw. And then one day I remember driving back from another voice coaching session with a long list of everything that is wrong with your voice, Ursula. And I was feeling so frustrated and hopeless. And I remember as I took this turn, I just thought, I can't do this anymore. And I stopped the car and I went, what if I stopped fixing my voice? And that was the first time in my life that I, I let go. I let go of this one way of being and sounding and having to, my career had to look like. And that is also the day that would always mark the day that I became a teacher, a student, a coach, a facilitator of the confident voice. And really a confident voice is your free, authentic voice. Even when we get in our own way, 99% of the time, the confident voice is that 1% that calls you back to you. And today I have the extreme privilege of working with female leaders, entrepreneurs, CEOs, and also in organizations with high performers to help them express their confident voices. And especially this year, I've been noticing a big shift, this gear change into expressing our authentic free voices with empowerment and with a confidence, a competence and a credibility. And I, I believe that as we've established today, that public speaking is not only on the stage speaking audience, but, but it's in putting your hand up in a meeting or walking into a cafe and speaking to somebody new. These are our voices. And what I want to share with you is my methodology that I use, which is the, the foundation of this confident voice. And a lot of this echoes everything that's already been said today. But I've, with a bit of research and a lot of influence from Sylvia Ann Hewlett, her studies on executive presence, the model that I use is the four elements. Now, the first part is mindset. And I know this would resonate with a lot of people in here today. And one aspect we look at is knowledge, knowing thyself, what differentiates you. And that's a tough question 
what do you bring to the table that's different to everyone else and the answer is in your story and and being able to express that with the world and then the second part is communication and here we look at the voice how you speak the the your body and your voice as an instrument and learning how to play that instrument and not get into the diminishing habits the ums and the the way we diminish ourselves because sometimes we're not even aware then the third element is gravitas what a beautiful word gravitas and this is being rooted in your field of expertise having that knowledge and to Again, I'm, I keep repeating this, we're in a room full of people who are so rooted in their expertise. And I know when I started my business, I wanted to spread myself so thin. I wanted to do business writing and talk about sustainable living and talk about speaking skills. And I had to promise myself for two years to just focus on just the voice and speaking to root and ground in there. I'm moving into my second year of my business, so we're getting there. And then the last part is appearance, image, because humans are visual creatures. And so becoming aware of what am I communicating with my image and what is that saying and expressing about my confident voice. And so they're all of these four elements, so it's the four, so it's your mindset, communications, the voice, your gravitas, it's your expertise, your substance, and then your image. And all of them feed into each other and they, they filter each other. And now, lastly, I'd like to leave you with a, with a, with a game. And, and this is something that we learned from Stanislavski. He is the father of modern acting. And he uses this method called what if. And actors, actors use this to unlock all the possibilities for their characters. So what if? And I want you to play that game. What if I walk into that room tomorrow as my most confident self? What if I go to that meeting or that experience as this confident version of myself? And it's, it's the clarity that Israel was speaking about. So play the game. What if? And thank you. Thank you for having me here. And I'd love to open the floor for any questions, any questions about the model, about the voice, the mindset, the gravitas, or the image.